Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear. Uh, please invite and share the link with your friends. And don't forget to download the video as soon as we finish. A Muslim, you know, he decided to refute me or refute me. And as usual, the Muslims, they always can refute me. If you remember, we made a video just a few days ago, actually two days ago, uh, two days ago, yesterday, I forgot. <laughs> uh, the last video, Muslim challenge Muhammad did not forget the Quran. Uh, in that video, the Muslim, he claimed that I provided a hadith which is not authentic. And then uh, we made the video and we showed them all authentic hadith, if you remember. This is the title of the video in front of you. You can go back and you can watch it. And we give a lot of approved reference. All of it is authentic. Then we start receiving comment from Muhammad. And, and you know, as usual, comment is hilarious. But this guy, he is a special guy. You know, he have a, a special ability uh, to respond. And here you notice how the Muslim, they change their attitude after they notice that they cannot change the claim that Muhammad forgot the Quran. So look what how they change. Now, too bad the answer is in uh, English, sorry, in Arabic. Uh, I will translate to you. Actually, you can use Google Translation yourself. You can copy the text, just go to the previous video, and you can uh, see the translation. So here I will show you. I will take it to Google, actually. Let us do this. Copy from Google. Switch to Arabic. Uh, I don't know why it's not translating the whole thing. <clears throat> I mean, what happened? We did not copy the whole text. We did. Let us do it again. Something not right. Okay, let us separate it, copy it two pieces. Maybe because there is space. Google did not take it all. Sorry, here we go here. See, how, I mean, I copy just a line and look how big it is now. Anyway, uh, he said, La Masha Allah, no God willing. It is a statement of the power of God Almighty that he is able to forget what he wills. The translation is not accurate, you know. Uh, he want to say to us, the Muslim here, that Allah is able to make you forget as he wish. So this is now from the power of Allah to forget the Quran. I thought from the power of Allah to preserve the Quran. So now from the power of Allah to forget the Quran? <laughs> okay, well, the, from the power of Allah, I forgot Allah himself. From the power of Allah, I, I forgot to believe in Muhammad. From the power of Allah, I forgot to pray to Allah. I mean, what, what, what a silly religion. So look how they switch position from denying that Muhammad, he forget to saying that this is from the power of God to forget forget what forget the Quran and then he said to us he quote for us from the Quran well the Quran says so you know any verses or uh, surahs we cause to be forgotten we give you something similar or better but you see how silly you are but this the verse here is not is not abrogated <laughs> even the guy he asked him he said the prophet is this verse abrogated he said no <laughs> and not to forget to mention how silly it is to say that there's a god who gave you just a verse in the morning and afternoon he wants you to forget it i mean what is the wisdom in this What, what, what is the wisdom? Of Allah abrogating Allah? Like, 
And let us say uh, Allah, he changed Allah. Uh, why he want to make you forget? I mean, there's many things is abrogated in the Quran and you Muslim don't follow it no more. As an example, you say to us, muta is not to be followed. It's chapter four, verse 24. So how come Allah, he kept the muta, which is useless. Nobody was going to do it except the Shia. And it's causing problem for Muslim. As you see, some, some, some Muslim, they say, no, we should follow it. Some Muslim, they say no. And the reason for that is in the Quran. So Allah, he caused the man to forget Quran, which is not going to be abrogated. But Allah will not make you forget the Quran, which is going to be abrogated. Now, in some cases, the Muslim, they say, this Quran is forgotten totally. It's abrogated. Uh, and we don't know anything about it. You know, as an example, uh, the 10 time breastfeeding for adult. And who in the world want to believe that this is abrogated? Obviously, the Muslim, they deleted those verses because they are very embarrassing to, to anyone. And nobody want to follow a regime uh, in such a, you know, hippie. It's a hippie cult. Imagine if your wife, she want to see a neighbor. She have to give her breast and suckle the neighbor 10 times before he can get into your house. Or let us say, I mean, I don't know how stupid it is. I mean, how, before he can stay with her alone. Like, what is that? Hmm? And this is why uh, you see Aisha, uh, she order her sisters or her nieces uh, to do breastfeeding for anyone want to attend upon her. So Allah, he made you forget the verses. How he made, how, how that happened? Muhammad, he woke up in the morning and that's it, right? That's it. Nobody can remember the verses. And not to question what kind of God this God who says, you know, you do this, you know. Imagine you want to uh, you want to meet. Uh, uh, you are going to visit an Islamic country, let us say the King of Jordan. And you have a message to his wife. Let us say from the wife of Trump. And then you cannot see the wife of the King of Jordan unless she suckle you 10 times. I mean, you cannot see her, but you can, you can hold her breast and you suckle her 10 times. I mean, what kind of... So you cannot see the face of a Muslim woman, but you can suckle her breast. So when you say to us that, you know, this verses, those verses are abrogated, that's the most stupid answer ever I can, I can come, you know, uh, 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 I never saw actually a stupid answer like this, because first of all, the verses we are talking about, they never be abrogated. And the hadith confirmed that. So why Allah causing him to forget? And here you notice something very stupid too. When Allah, he said in the Quran, and he is quoting the verse actually, that I will cause, I will recite to the Quran, فلا تنسى, we will not forget, except what Allah will. So it is the plan of Allah from the beginning to forget the Quran. So why is in the Quran? I mean, what kind of religion this religion is? So if Allah, he planned to send Quran, and his plan is to forget the Quran. So why he send it and why he caused it to forget it? Hmm? It is the plan of Allah. But what is the logic? And when Allah, he says, we will make you recite Quran and you will not forget, and then it says, accept what Allah will. Is that a verse Muhammad he made after he get busted, he is forgetting, or before? Same time, how you Muslims, after now, you can come and say, we have a Quran which is preserved. You are just saying, and you agreed, that your Quran is not preserved. Muhammad, he forgot Quran. And if the Prophet of Islam, he forgot the Quran, did he forget it before he gave it to you or after he gave it to you? 
You know what I mean, guys? What is the guarantee that Muhammad, who forget the Quran, and now the Muslims, they agree with us after we got them busted, that he did not forget the Quran before even he mentioned it to you? And if Muhammad forget the Quran, did you Muslim forget it too? And if Muhammad and the Muslims are caused to be forgetting the Quran, so is that a blackout in your history time? The story behind the verses, what happened, all of this is gone. <laughs> it's whipped out from your memory. And to prove to you that this is absolutely false, we just mentioned to you that then breastfeeding for adult. You remember it? Aisha, she said to her, you know, the wives of Muhammad, they said the Prophet he did that, so I would do it. Everybody will remember it. And you're a Muslim, you write it in the in the hadith, so not, nothing is it's, it's there. The verse is gone, but the story is there. So Allah he he, he whipped up the, the, the verse. What is the wisdom? And here we go. Aisha, after the verse is gone, she is a practicing breastfeeding for adult. Why she did that? The verse is gone. In different hadith, Aisha, she say that the goat ate it. Do you think the goat, she ate the Quran in order to make the Prophet and the Muslims, actually at that, time, at that point, Muhammad was dead, in order to make Muslims forget the Quran? Do you think that this goat is sent by Allah? The story is very well known. When Muhammad he was dead, Aisha she said, uh, uh, a, a goat she uh, get inside the bedroom of Muhammad and she ate the Quran. And she claimed she mentioned two surahs, which is eating. But if you read carefully, you will notice there is a three. One is about the breastfeeding for adult ten time, which is a shameful verse for any cult in the world, unless you are a hippie. The second one is uh, about stoning to death. And the third one, which you see in the note here, says these verses were abrogated in recitation, but in not rule in ruling. <laughs> I mean, can you believe there's a, such a cult like this? If you want to keep the ruling, why you abrogate the recitation? Give me a reason. I mean, what is the wisdom of abrogating verses by recitation when you are going to practice those verses? Isn't it better if we have the verses so we can read them and then we can practice what we are going to read or what we are reading? So imagine we erase the law and then we have to follow the law. But we don't have the law. In the top of that, as long you agreed in your post that you're a prophet, he forgot the Quran. And this is from Allah power. You see, your translation of Google is not good. It says that uh, Allahu ala kulli shayin qadir. Let us copy the second part. I copy only one part. Huh? Because Google did not do the right thing i will copy the second part the second two line and paste it there uh -huh. it's not copying the whole thing okay let's try this okay uh -huh. Let us try. There's one letter is missing, and I don't want that to happen. But let us do this, what we can do. All right. I will type the letter which is missing. Oh, I type. Okay. Here we go. So the statement is about the power of God Almighty and does not mean that the Prophet forgets something of the Quran, but rather also indicate that the Prophet, like all human beings, forget and remember, but God did not want him to forget the Quran. God knows best. 
What do you mean God don't want him to forget the Quran? You just said he forgot the Quran. I mean, do you see how crazy those people are? You just said in the previous verse that he forget the Quran, and now you are saying he don't want to forget the Quran. Aren't you answering me in the video where I am showing your prophet forgetting the Quran? So what do you mean Allah don't want him to forget the Quran? He forgot the Quran already. And you are the one who's saying this from the power of, it's a sign of the power of Allah to forget the Quran. And you know, the funny thing here, uh, Islam as a religion always consider forgetting anything about God is from shaitan. As an example, this, the fiction story of the uh, Al-Khudr, which is Mr. Green, who did drink from the fountain of youth, and since then he became a green. And if he sit in a in, in a in a dry grass, the grass will turn green. That's why they call him a green, Mr. Green. Uh, and this is coming from the time of Gilgamesh stories and legions, you know, fiction stories. Muhammad, as usual, he is still former nations, legions, and he put it in the Quran, like the flying carpet, the flying horse, the talking ant, uh, 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 Alexander the Great, the man with the two horn, uh, the seven sleepers. Uh, you, you name it, and this is no different. So there is a guy, his name is Al Khudr, who drank from the fountain of youth, and since then he never died. He was in the funeral of Noah. He was in the funeral of Moses. He was in the funeral of Muhammad. He was uh, exist when in the time of Jesus too, for sure. So this guy, like his, that's it, Mister. He will not die. That's it. He's Mister Green, and he lived in the middle of a, of the of the sea, uh, in the top of a rock. And when uh, if you want to go to him. Uh, you take with you a whale, and the whale will lead you to where his rock is. This whale was dead, but be because he had been touched by the fountain of youth, he came back to life. Here you will notice that when they, Moses and his, uh, his uh, uh, servant, uh, Moses told the servant, uh, you know, give, give us the whale. Where is the whale? We want to eat the whale. I mean, look at this story, how stupid. Allah told him, take a wheel with you, he will lead you, and then he will eat him, a wheel. Hmm. And the translation here, it says a fish, but the fact doesn't say fish, it says hoot. Uh, and nobody forget it except shaitan. Okay, shaitan calls you to forget what Allah told you. And the Quran is all over mentioning the same, that the one who make you forget things is shaitan. Especially when it's about Remembering Allah or the words of Allah. Chapter 12, verse number 42. So the Quran is a book of contradiction. In one side, it says that the one who forget the word of Allah are evil people. As an example, the Christians. The Christians, according to the Quran, they forgot the words of Allah. Is that from the power of Allah or from the power of shaitan? So, who is the one who make you forget the word of Allah? Is it Allah or Shaitan? The Quran confirmed that it's Allah. But if it's Allah, why Allah want to punish the Christian for forgetting the word of Allah? <laughs> and here you see that Allah is again is a Satan. Because because the Christian they forgot the words of Allah, Allah will string them by hatred and enmity one to each other. This is Satan act. This is Satan act. Even the same chapter confirm that this is Satan act. Who is the one who spread hatred? If you ask Muslims. They will say shaitan. Okay, who is the one who spread the hatred between Christians? They will say Allah. <laughs> Hilarious. Hilarious. <coughs> Isn't it? Isn't it really? In the same chapter, chapter 5, verse number 91, it says, Satan's plan is to execute uh, to, to, to excite enmity, 
and hatred between you. So, spreading enmity is the act of shaitan. Okay, who is the one who make me forget the Quran? Shaitan. Who is the one who make me forget to pray? Shaitan. Okay, who is the one who make the Christian forget the Quran? Shaitan. Who is the one who make Muhammad forget the Quran? Allah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I mean, this religion is extremely dummy and funny. There is a there is a hadith. I don't know if I can find it in English. I don't think so. Uh, where Muhammad he said. A guy, he was next to Muhammad. He said to him, uh, uh, Prophet, like you, you skip verses. Did you forget them or they are abrogated? The Prophet, he said, no, they are. I forgot them. So why you forgot them? If Allah, he promised him, you will not forget. And if the promise is only about things, he is going to be abrogated. And if your Prophet forget the Quran, how you must have received the Quran then? How many verses or chapters your prophet he forgot before he delivered it? If you say to me, no, 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 all the verses he forgot it after he delivered it, what is the proof? How you can prove that this not happen? If you forget already, you never heard it. <laughs> and here you see that this cult, which is claiming that the Quran is preserved. But by the way, I am against to attack the Quran as a book not preserved. It's for my pleasure and my uh, benefit that this book never changed and i will tell you why the more in the future the more we prove that the quran is a changed people play in the more muslim they will find an excuse to say oh hold on so you are saying the quran is not totally from allah that's wonderful so all the stupid mistakes history mistakes science mistakes uh, arabic mistakes uh, grammar mistakes all those stupid mistakes are not the mistakes of allah Actually, we heard in many, if you watch my videos, many debate I have with, with Abduls, you know, already they are saying that. They are saying we believe in the Quran, but not all of it. All the stupid things in the Quran is obviously not from Allah. But can you name for me one thing in the Quran is not stupid? Just one thing. Actually, if you read the whole Quran, there is nothing there. Like in this verse, is he's copying Paul. Chapter 5, verse number 19. He's trying to copy Paul. That drinking, gambling, all those things is evil. Those who practice them, if you want to go to heaven, don't practice those things. Everything in the Quran, even what it's looked like, there's some kind of ethic. All the ethic of the Quran is stolen, if it exists, stolen from either the Christian books or the Jewish books, which is a Christian books anyway. So when the Muslim, he confirm <clears throat> that, yes, the prophet, he forget, but Allah, he said to him, Allah will cause you to forget. You just admitted that your prophet is not qualified to be a prophet. And if your God, he caused his prophet to forget, your God himself is, cannot be God. Which prophet before his God make him forget his book? Which God before and what logic does God have that he will send you a verse and he wants you to forget it totally. Like, forget it. That's it. Forget it. It's not like just abrogation. No. Forget it. So, because they are desperate trying to defend their cult, they come with hilarious answers and it is very laughable. Not to forget to mention that the Quran, you know, all over accused shaitan of causing you forgetting things. 
Shaitan caused you to forget. In the same time, we find that the one who make you forget Quran is Allah. But if you forget the Bible, it's Shaitan. If you forget the Torah, it is Shaitan. If you forget the, the, the Quran, it's Allah. <laughs> Look like Shaitan and Allah, they have a meeting and they said, hey, listen, I my duty, I cause the Christian and the Jews to forget the, the Torah and the Bible. Your duty to make the Muslim forget the Quran. Okay, 50-50. <laughs> you know, Muhammad, he told them in the Hadith as an example, one of you, one of you, he forget the Quran. Uh, Don't say, you know, uh, don't say I forget the Quran. Say in somehow like I've been caused to forget the Quran. Like as an example, this hadith, let us say Sahih al-Bukhari. So they will not say this is weak. The Prophet said, it's a bad thing that some of you say, I have forgotten such and such, but this, but Muhammad, he said, I forgot such and such. Verses of the Quran, for indeed he has been caused by Allah to forget it. And here you notice something very stupid. Not all the Muslim they will forget the Quran according to the Hadith. Some of you. So why Allah causing some of you forgetting the Quran? What what, what is the what is the gain? Some of you. Huh? Let us see if this is uh, actually translation is not accurate. It doesn't say some of you. He said like if one of you he say this doesn't say some of you. Uh, if one of you he say I forget in the Quran such and such verses, for indeed he should not say I forget it. He should be I be caused to forget it. Now, to be honest, in the translation here there is an addition. Between two bracket, it says by Allah. In Arabic, it doesn't say that. However, this is what the Muslim believe. So we will let it there. So he has been caused to forget by who? By Allah. Okay, but you Muslims, you fight us 24 hours, seven days a week to say the Quran is preserved by the heart. So now we have how many versions of the Quran? Because if some of you forget the Quran and some of you, because you are exchanging now, what you have? Some of you, let us say, have the chapter of Al-Baqarah, the cow chapter, a hundred verse. Other one, he have 30. Other one, he have 200. How many Quran we have? And what is the purpose of Allah to cause you? What is the reason? You see, when we speak about God, we speak about logical reasoning. Why God want to do such a thing? Is God is stupid or smart? The answer will be, he's smart. He's, he's uh, not only smart, he's perfect. Okay, so why the perfect God, he don't want you to have the perfect Quran? Why he is causing you to forget? And how he make even Muhammad forget the Quran? So everything the Muslim they say to us about Quran preservation is a foolish claim. You know, we have tons of reference from Islamic books. Nothing is a Christian speaking clearly that the Quran not preserved. As an example, uh, the, 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 uh, there's a hadith from Umar who claim, according to him, uh, there is less than 20, 25% of the Quran as exists today. He said there's a million, a thousand thousand letter and 25,000 million, a thousand thousand and I think 24 or 25, I forgot the hadith. I will, I will get it. Letter. Okay, go check right now and go over how many letters in the Quran today. There's a hadith where it says that the chapter of uh, the cow chapter was equal to the chapter of Al-Ahzab, which means there's more than 200 verses are missing. 
just in one chapter. And now we see that Muslims forget, Muhammad, they forget the Quran, Allah caused them to forget the Quran, and yet the Muslims, they say to us, Quran was preserved. How hilarious. If your book saying, no, Allah caused you to forget the Quran, Allah caused you to forget the Quran. And let me ask you, if Allah caused me to do something, can I fight the will of Allah? You will say no. So if Allah, he made me forget the Quran, can I memorize the Quran again? You will say yes. I mean, how stupid that is. So why Allah making me forget the Quran if I can challenge Allah and remember the Quran again? <laughs> what a game. I mean, when he calls you to forget, he calls you for what purpose? So Muslims' answers are, I find it very hilarious and very silly. And, you know, they are the same as their prophet. They have no answer for anything. You will notice at the end of his quotation, this person or his answer, he said, Allah knows best. He cannot claim he even have an answer for anything because Allah knows best. What Muslims have for us? Allah knows best. But, okay, but, but do Allah knows? Allah knows nothing. Allah in Islam is negative God. He's negative. You know, if somebody committed adultery, who is the one who caused you to commit adultery? Allah. Is Allah positive God or negative God? The one who caused me to do adultery, is he good God or bad God? This is your prophet saying the following. And don't tell me this is weak. This is Sahih. Verily Allah, Muhammad said, Verily Allah has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in and which he of necessity must commit the adultery of the eye, the lust of the look, etc. So it's a, it is a must to do adultery and you have to do adultery because this is what Allah he decide for you. It's, you have to do it of necessity. You must commit. So have you ever heard of a stupid negative God like this? He make you commit adultery. And then in the same time, he force you. He is not asking you. He is not, you know, he's, it is a must to commit. So he forced to commit adultery. and be, But in the book, he says, don't do adultery. And then Allah will punish you for doing adultery. So he is the one who forced you to do it. He is the one who told you don't do it and he is the one who's going to punish it punish you for doing it same for the quran allah told them don't do the you know preserve the quran actually he said to them in uh, uh, allah he never said to the muslim by the way preserve the quran allah he claimed that he can preserve the quran he says uh, that is on us uh, uh, to preserve the quran right As you see here, Allah, he claimed that he is the one to collect the Quran, not Uthman. Inna alayna wa Chapter 75, verse number 17. Who is going to collect the Quran? Allah. Who is going to uh, recite the Quran? Allah. Where is Allah book, which is collected by Allah? Secondly, why Allah want to collect the book if he have it already? You know, when I say I am a collector, that means I don't have everything. I'm collecting. I am collecting. If I have it all, I am not collecting no more. So, stupid language, stupid meaning, stupid statement from a false prophet claiming that Allah is talking, which is supposedly God. If Allah is the one who sent the Quran, how Allah who sent the Quran will collect the Quran? Look, you are the one who sent it. You have it already there. <laughs> and if Allah is going to collect the Quran, and this is why by when Muhammad he died, they didn't have Quran. They start collecting the Quran because they were waiting for Allah to collect the Quran. There was no Quran. <laughs> but Allah never show up. So Uthman start burning anyone have a Quran and he make his own version. And actually, we don't even have the book of Uthman. Where is the book of Uthman? Nobody have it. So as you see here, 
the more you read about in this book, the more you see how stupid it is, the more you see how funny, how dummy, the one who made it is, is a very confused person. He says something, he do the opposite, or he do the opposite, and he says something, and sometimes he say what he say in the morning, he change it afternoon. And actually, even the Arab, you know, uh, uh, if you go to chapter 2, uh, verse 106, and the funny, the guy in Arabic, he said to me, you do not know uh, the, the science of uh, tafsir, which means interpretation for the Quran. So, okay, we do not know the science of uh, interpretation, let us read the science of interpretation. You're scholars, you know, let's say I am uh, I'm a person who do not know. Okay, you know, you're scholars knows. Do you accept what they say? Here we go. You're a prophet. You're a prophet was a, the joke of the Arab. He said, chapter 2, verse 106. By the way, here, uh, there is many reading for it, and the, the meaning is so different between this word here, Maybe I and like I don't talk about it because this is need people who speak Arabic. Here, this word is written in many ways in the Quran and totally different meaning. But we will leave that for a different time. When the disbelievers began to uh, uh, deal with the matter of abrogation, saying that one day Muhammad he enjoins his companion at one thing, and in the, then in the second next day he forbid it. How that can be? One day you say something, second day you forbid it, and this is an order from God. And remember, the order of God took 1,000 years to be delivered. <laughs> Isn't it the Quran says that the message of Allah arrived to Muhammad, delivered to Muhammad in the journey of 1,000 years, one way journey? Which means the angels, in order to go back to Allah and get the new order, they need another uh, another 1,000 years. So the total is what? 1,000 to go, 1,000 to come back. Chapter 32, verse number 5. He rules all affairs, okay, from the heavens to the earth, all right? In the end, all, between two bracket affairs, go up to him on a day, the space wherefore will be a thousand year of your counting. So how Muhammad he make receive an order in the morning from Allah? When the second order should be delivered, 2,000 years after, not 1,000 years, because remember, this is just to come to, come to, to Muhammad. The same angel, his name, his name is Jibreel, supposedly, is the one who deliver. It's not like different angel, like one come, one go. So Jibreel, he come down. It take him a thousand years to come. Okay, now Muhammad is going to receive a new message, second morning, to change the law, as we see in the, in the Muslim reference. So in order for Jibreel to deliver the new message, Jibreel is going to take him 1,000 years to go and 1,000 years to come back. So if Muhammad, he receives second verse, it should be 2,000 years after that verse, which means until now, we need 600 years more from the time of Muhammad. Muhammad was exist for 1,500 years ago. In order for Muhammad to receive a new verses, which is going to delete or abrogate the previous verses, he need another 1,000 year to go, 1,000 years to come back, and that is 2,000 years. So here you see, I mean, this is a, this is a this book is a collection of stupidity, you know, and madness. He was copying, by the way, something from the Old Testament where it says that day for God is like is is like a one year one thousand year of your time. But the Bible doesn't say read that God he have a day. The Bible is saying to you, showing to you that God out of time, you know, God, time go on you, but it's nothing for God. So if you think okay, judgment day is not coming. Okay, you know, uh, I will live for long. He is saying to you, one thousand years is nothing. It's not like it's like a god, like a day for God. Here, Muhammad he take it seriously, as literally a day equal to one thousand, and he make it clear that the day for Allah literally is a thousand year of our time, and that means Allah is under the law of physics. All the different is that we have rotation of the earth. You know, every 24 hours, 
the rotation of Allah Earth is different. It take one thousand year. <laughs> so even Muhammad, when he copy a story, it come foolish and stupid. I will stop here. Leave your your leave your comment, and I hope Muslims are learning something. Uh, feel free to subscribe to our Patreon, and we will be. Uh, always update you about our new coming videos so you can be the first to know and you can join us live because sometimes youtube for some reason they censor our videos you know the reasons and they don't send notifications so people they show up after we finish the best way is to subscribe with us and though so you will be informed thank you very much for being here may the lord bless you all and until we see you soon again uh, i say uh, christ is lord islam is a joke and uh, be kind to Muslims, don't hate them. They are poor people who need a lot of help. They've been fooled, they've been promised, they've been told, and here we are destroying everything they heard. And they cannot get away with it. Feel free to read my books, and we have them in many languages. Uh, I will try to go live on air tomorrow, God is willing, and we will see what the topic will be. All right, take care and God bless. Bye-bye.